This programme is sponsored by Philly Shave, a Champions League sponsor. The moment that saved Rangers Champions League challenge from 2-0 down, Rangers fought back to draw with Marseille. Tonight they face CSKA Moscow, the side that knocked out holders Barcelona. Moscow are bottom of the group two weeks ago in Belgium, they lost to FC Bruges. Good evening to you and welcome to our exclusive coverage of the second set of matches in the European Champions League. All we can ask is that the drama and excitement of a fortnight ago is matched in the four games you'll see with us here tonight. For now, we're building towards live coverage of CSKA Moscow against Rangers from Bochum, Germany. And our guests tonight know all about big occasions like this. Butcher waits. There's Butcher! Butcher for Rangers! Skippered Rangers in the early years of the club's revival in the late 80s, always in the thick of the action, and Davy Cooper always cool under pressure, as he proved so many times in the light blue. Welcome both. Terry, good to be back in Scotland. Yes, it's nice to be back. It's actually nice to uh, see those pictures again. I think that was the last goal I scored. <laughs> about five years ago now, but uh, it's nice to be here. Yes. Good man. Welcome back to you too, Davy. What chance do you give Rangers tonight? Yeah, I think obviously a very good chance tonight, Jim. Uh, we don't know a lot about uh, the Russians, as we know, but they lost the game against Bruges. Um, and I think Rangers will be looking to, to build in the draw they got in the first match. I think they can do well tonight. You go along with that, Terry? Yeah, I think so. Looking at the Rangers team, I mean, it's a, um, a much more solid team, I think, with all due respect to uh, the lad Murray, who came in and did very well in the uh, first game. Um, obviously, uh, Richard Goff wasn't quite fit. Trevor Stephen wasn't quite fit. Trevor Stephen would have uh, benefited from more games. Um, they look to have a more solid team and uh, hopefully you know, that uh, uh, solid look can uh, transform itself into goals. But no Richard Goff and no Gary Stevens tonight, Davey? Yes, yeah, obviously a big blow uh, to Rangers. Um, I feel really sorry for Gary. He's had a terrible season so far with injuries. Um, but now we've got to look on the positive side. Uh, I think Stuart McCall will come into that position and uh, I'm sure he'll do very well. And they have to go in with a positive attitude, don't they, Terry? Yes, I think so. It's not as though um, away goals count for anything in these games. I mean, if they go into the game and say, right, um, obviously the first 10 or 15 minutes will be um, each team toying with each other, trying to uh, get to know the strengths and uh, weaknesses of, uh, of the opponents. And um, given that um, early cautious start, you know, if Rangers can um, give it a real good go, whereas they didn't perhaps against Marseille, if they can give it a real good go, uh, with Annie McCoy's back up front, they're bound to score goals. Let's hope so. Well, we'll take a break there. In a couple of minutes, we look in detail at the men from Moscow. Hello again. Well, despite their defeat against FC Bruges, CSKA Moscow will be formidable opposition for Rangers tonight. Ken McRobb reports on the Russian champions. Having disposed of Viking Reykjavik in a 5-2 aggregate, CSKA took on the European Cup holders Barcelona in round two. In the home leg at the Lenin Stadium, Alexander Grishin gave CSKA a 1-0 lead. But the Spaniards squared it at 1-1 and were 2-0 up in the new Camp when CSKA showed what they're made of. Fezulin setting up Bushmanov for the first. A second half corner saw defender Denis Mashkarin sprint into the box. They had the Russians level on the night, level on aggregate, but ahead on the away goals rule. However, CSKA didn't have to rely on that regulation. In the cauldron of the new Camp, Dmitry Korsakov, Alexander Grishin, and Ilshad Fizulin tore Barcelona apart. Substitute Korsakov sealing a memorable 3-2 victory with a cheeky back heeler that secured a place for the Russians in the Champions League. That part of the campaign began a fortnight ago in Belgium. CSKA survived persistent Bruges pressure but were beaten when number three Kolotovkin played Amakachi onside and the striker scored what was the only goal of the game. Well Terry, they put out Barcelona so Rangers have to give them every respect. Yes, I think Rangers will do. I think that uh, Walter Smith uh, 
and uh, Archie Knox will be well briefed on them um, in such a short space of time, of course. But um, yes, yeah, down to the Rangers players on the night, he's picked uh, um, a very strong team. Like I said before, a very solid team. Um, I think Rangers obviously don't want to lose the game. If they get a point out of the game, fine, but two points would be great for them. The Russians, Davey, a young, young side, but obviously full of determination and character. Yeah, as you could see, they're uh, young and very, very fit. Um, I think it shows you with the, the goal that they scored uh, against Barcelona, one of the goals, they went from one end of the pitch right up to the other very, very quickly. And I think uh, defensively they could be a wee bit lacking. I think that's where Alan McCoist and Mark Cately could uh, really make them suffer tonight. But they're certainly a very capable side and Rangers won't underestimate them in the least. Every one of the Moscow players, Terry, to an extent, is in the shop window tonight. Yeah. They, they, want, they want moves, they want to, to leave the club ultimately. Yes, obviously. I mean, um, they've seen players um, go from um, Russia and uh, from those countries to the West and uh, obviously um, collected lots of money on the way and uh, lots of uh, plaudits as well. But um, they'll be keen to do well. It all depends on what sort of mood they're in. If they, if they really want to do it for the club, if they really want to do it for the money, um, the bonuses or whatever, or if they really want to get away to the West. So they really are in the shop window. It'll be interesting to see what their attitude is tonight. Yes, indeed. Well, the scene is well and truly set then. So let's now cross to Bochum for the first half of CSKA Moscow against Rangers and join our commentary team tonight of summariser Gordon McQueen and commentator Jerry McNee. And welcome to the Ruhr Stadion here in Bochum. Both teams have just come onto the field. A big noisy crowd here. Of course, it's a home game for CSKA Moscow, but their fans, they have a couple of hundred here, are outnumbered and outshouted so far by the Rangers fans. So Walter Smith has opted for Alexei Mikhailichenko, Trevor Stephen, and Mark Hatley as his three non-Scots and the Russian champions along expected lines. We have a couple of dangerous players up front in Oleg Sergeyev and Ilsat Fisilin and as the referee Kim Milton Nielsen from Denmark so the stadium holds in the region of 42,000 people that was uh, practically filled for the visit of Bayern Munich uh, the other day so there's the CSKA Moscow lineup and Fokin is the Captain Minko there, number seven, will play wide right. And Faisulin, number 11, fair haired player, uh, who will certainly have to be watched. This is the furthest that uh, CSKA Moscow have ever gone in European competition. CSKA standing for Central Sports Club Army. And there are the substitutes. And one or two useful players in there as well. Mash carrying number 14. Carries a threat in the air. And there's the Rangers lineup, uh, captain tonight by Ali McCoist. Of course, Richard Goff is still absent. And uh, Ian Ferguson back in the side as well, having missed out against Marseille. So Rangers are much stronger tonight than they were for that game a fortnight ago. And Trevor Stephen there, who'll be an important player for them. Well, tonight is Rangers 157th European tie, the 63rd in the Champions Cup and they've won 30, drawn 9 and lost 23 the Moscow side relatively inexperienced they've played uh, just 13 ties in total and uh, some of the youngsters uh, who come on of course uh, and played against Marseille on the bench for Rangers so Kim Nielsen there from Denmark a 32 year old lawyer he was a reserve uh, official in Sweden last summer he handled the Leeds Stuttgart game at Ellen Road, the 4-1 match. He also handled Slovan Bratislava when they played Milan earlier on in this tournament. And uh, he has a fair bit of experience having handled matches in Turkey and Italy. So alongside me, of course, uh, Gordon McQueen. And Gordon, looking forward to the match. Yeah, the terrific atmosphere. Uh, big, big range of support here. And a, and a few Russians here as well. It really is. It's a lovely stadium. There was a lot of heavy rain here, but the pitch is in marvellous condition. So the referee just getting everything organised. Rangers fans have been just about everywhere uh, in this town the last uh, couple of days. And they've been in uh, terrific humour as well. But uh, certainly a good noisy atmosphere and uh, very colourful indeed. And the Russians uh, with the various flags and banners. And I see uh, someone down there in a green and white hoop shirt who's possibly taking the wrong turning. So uh, it will be Ali McCoyst and... Mark Hatley 
to get this Champions League match underway for Rangers. Again, the referee just uh, checking with his linesman. And of course, Ellie McCoys can uh, beat the Rangers' goal-scoring record in Europe tonight. He's on 12 along with Ralph Brand. That's a record that's uh, stood for about uh, 25, 26 years. And uh, what a night it would be for Ali McCoyce to, to achieve that. He's achieved just about everything else in 1992. So a final check of the watch from the referee. And this European Champions League match gets underway. And the long ball played there in the direction of Alexei Mikhailichenko. And uh, certainly his presence uh, should be a bit of a trump card for Rangers tonight. But they'll have to watch the fast breaking of this side. Sergeyevich through the middle in this opening minute. The ball comes off Gorham. It's still not properly cleared, and eventually it's David Robertson who races in. Well, what a dramatic start here in Bochum. And already the Russians showing the tremendous pace they have going forward. Well, it was David Robertson who came rushing into the rescue. Sergei coming through there. Andy Gorham did well to block him. Trevor Stephen was back there. It seemed the ball must end up in the back of the net. John Brown toppling to the ground, and then across came David Robertson to get it to safety. Well, that was a real layoff because it looked like a certain rushing goal there. I mean, great block initially by Andy Gordon, but a real layoff with some really slack marking there by Rangers. Well, there was always going to be such a danger through the middle in the absence of Richard Goff. Rangers will really have to settle themselves down. Well, certainly the early warning has been given. So Robertson, who made that clearance, putting the long one forward, looking for McCoyst. That's hooked away there, though, by Kolotovkin. This is Mikhailichenko for Rangers. Durant. And it's cleared up field by Bistrov. So the Rangers fans have gone rather quiet, and no wonder... You've got to say that, that uh, just about everything Rangers have been involved in in terms of Europe this season. There have been uh, early chances. Here comes Ali McCoy now, but a uh, high boot indicates the referee. Mr Nielsen, I'm told, speaks very good English. Uh, McCoy racing in there, and you can see the, the high boot. But mind you, the uh, Russian defender was pretty high as well. That was uh, Sergei Fokin. This is Bistrov, switching the play to Kolotovkin. And McCall made the challenge of the ball breaking free, but uh, Trevor Stephen getting a touch. Seeing Ferguson to McCoy's play on, says the referee, the long one now for Hatley to chase. out for the throw-in to CSKA Moscow. Well, Daniel Amakachi of uh, FC Bruges, who played against this side uh, a couple of weeks ago, says that the neutral venue will matter not to them. They play the same way all the time, just like a machine, and they never drop the pace. They adopt a safety first policy with players behind the ball, but they tend to suck the opposition in and then spring forward as we witnessed uh, in that opening minute. So Rangers will have to show a certain degree of patience as well. They defended extremely well at Elland Road against Leeds and uh, did a bit of uh, counter-attacking themselves. They'll not want to do anything uh, too positive in the opening spell. The Moscow side content to knock it about, trying to draw Rangers out. This is Kolotovkin. It's cut out by McCall. Trevor Stephen sitting in there in a deep right position, the right back roll almost. But he'll be trying to get forward whenever possible. Through now for Hatley. Good switch of play by Hatley to Mikhailichenko. Robertson's running in support. A lovely touch there from Mikhailichenko. This is David Robertson. And the ball goes behind for the corner kick to Rangers. So perhaps a chance now for uh, David McPherson to do something. I see him moving forward uh, along with John Brown. 
Uh, McAllister right on the goal line. Malyukov keeping a close watch on him. So an early test for the goalkeeper. McPherson's up there, but that's well handled by Gutiyev, who's taken over in goal from Karin. And a good throw out as well. Again, they come forward at speed. This is Karsakov. Trying to find Paisulin. So, five minutes gone here in Bochum. It's CSKA Moscow nil, Rangers nil. Again, they're knocking it about well. But, uh, in steps Durant. Trevor Stephen. And the person's uh, effort they have cut out, but uh, fortunately for Rangers, it breaks to Brown. A switch of play now to Robertson. And the referee awarding the free kick. And there's the uh, Russian manager, Gennady Kostilev. Certainly, um, CSK's two forwards are prepared to work hard. Serge even Faisal and um, closing players down there. We've got a free kick for David Robertson. And it's Hedley going for it and uh, doing enough to win the corner kick. Uh, conceded there by Sergei Fokin. He was a member of the Soviet squad at Italia 90, but he didn't actually play. So it's Mikhail Lachenko. He'll hit the in-swinger here with the left foot. He gets a second bite at it. Play to Ferguson. Good play there by Ferguson, winning another corner. Two Rangers. Conceded by Dmitry Kasakov. Again, it's Mikhailichenko. This time, it's an awkward one for the goalkeeper to the far post. This is Durant, getting the number four this evening. Now it's Brown. Durant again. Trevor Stevens in plenty of space here. He's got Mikhailichenko to his right. He decides to have the shot, and that uh, seemed to take a deflection there. It's a corner kick. It come off Kolotovkin. Yeah, this is a little bit, a little bit better from Rangers now. I mean, that's four, four corner kicks of one in the match already, and the goalkeeper didn't look too convincing when he tried to come out for that last one and missed it by miles. So again, it's Alexei Mikhailichenko. Again, he's going for that far post, and again the goalkeeper showing nerves. Well, I know that uh, Archie Knox, the Rangers assistant manager, uh, was out watching uh, the Moscow side. Uh, so too was Billy Kirkwood, and uh, both noted that. Uh, this goalkeeper uh, tends not to be too clever with the, the cross ball. We played in the second half uh, of the match in Bruges, the 1-0 defeat after Karin had been injured. And you see him under pressure there from Haitley, not looking at all happy. Well, this is Trevor Stephen for Rangers. Ferguson. Cut out there, though, by Faisulin. Well, kept in play there by Gusmanov. Again, the Moscow side knocking it about uh, quite freely. This is Minko. It's by Sulin. Cleared by Ferguson. Just bench there. Walter Smith hasn't quite appeared in that lineup. But here come the Russians again. It's blocked by Robertson. This is Mikhailichenko. Long one for Haitley to chase, but uh, the covers there from Bistrov. Now 
Charlie McCoy's battling well, that's brilliant play by McCoy, it's away from two defenders. Well, Hitley stumbled there, just outside the penalty area. But uh, terrific work by Ali McCoy. 32 goals he has to his credit this season. Swing just battling for it again. Person's breaking in the right. This is McCall. So 10 minutes gone, still no scoring here in Bochum. Yeah, that wasn't one of Stuart McCall's better efforts there, but that was a lovely bit of uh, play by Ali McCoyster, knocked the ball into the, the, the box for, for Mark Haitley. And it looked to me as if Malyukov just nudged Mark Haitley, sent him sprawling, but obviously the referee never spotted that. Well, Stuart McCall certainly not afraid to have a pot at goal, because he scored in the Skull League Cup final. And he scored a couple against uh, Sparta Prague last year. So he tends to be a big occasion scorer. Uh, having a pot, one of them might just go in. But here comes Ali McCoyst. You know, the first time shot, and obviously the Rangers will try to put as much pressure as possible on Alexander Gutiev in the CSKA goal. Well, Ali McCoyst has five hat tricks this season, including uh, four in one game, game against Falkirk. And his two European goals against Leeds, home and away. Person getting the touch, looking for the head of Hitley. McCall switches it to Trevor Stephen, who's getting a fair bit of space and using it well. Another high upward ball for the goalkeeper. And he'll really have to settle down. Twenty-five years of age, he certainly does have a bit of experience. is Bistroff, played off there by Minko. It's cut out by John Brown. Trevor Stephen. McCoyst, and a bit of a breakdown in communications there between the two Rangers players. And the throw-in goes to CSKA Moscow. Person's clearance. Well, Fokin is doing uh, well enough in the air against Hitley. And here's Mikhailichenko using the pace of Robertson. He's being chased all the way by Gushin. The ball cleared high. They're onto the stand roof, in fact. Paul providing the cross, the goalkeeper's missed it again. Touch from Hitley. It's Ferguson. It's gone in. Rangers have taken the lead. 13 minutes gone. Ian Ferguson for Rangers to light there from Archie Knox. The goalkeeper made an absolute hash of it again. Well, automatically, it... Rangers take the lead. Yes, yeah, Stuart McCall knocks this one in, and the goalkeeper is at a very nervous start. Oh, Hitley challenges him. Bounces, knocks out team first, it looks as if it takes a bit of a deflection, a little bit of a break for Rangers, just spins over Gutierrez's head and into the back of the net. It's certainly a terrific start for Rangers. Well, Ferguson certainly hammered the ball there. It took the slight deflection. What a start for Rangers, what a start for Ian Ferguson, his third goal of the season, his first goal in the Champions League. Ian Ferguson missed the Marseille game because of suspension and he still has to be careful tonight with two bookings against his name another one would uh, rule him out uh, of the next match uh, away to Bruges uh, CSK Moscow have no fewer than seven players in yellow cards well they just couldn't ask for anything more what a fright they got in the opening minute of this match David Robertson clearing practically off the line. 
And now Rangers get a break at the other end. You really do need breaks in this tournament if you do anything at all. They certainly got one there, but they can really cash in now by keeping the pressure on this goalkeeper. Yeah, it's been an awful start to the game, good to you. He's just coming for balls, missing them by miles, and I think we see him. a lot of balls get slung into the box. But Trevor Stephen down here with an injury, I mean, he's... Uh, I think a lot of people felt that Stuart McCall might fill that right-back, right midfield role, but in actual fact, Trevor Stephen's tucked in there, and Rangers basically playing with three at the back. So, just over 15 minutes gone. And what a like this could be for Rangers. Two points tonight would be a marvellous achievement, bearing in mind this is a, an away game for them. Going into this match uh, with one point from the opening game against Marseille. So Trevor Stephen back on his feet. And the match underway again, it's Ali McCoyst. And of course, not having to worry too much about the away goal rule at this stage. Rangers really can afford to push forward now. Uh, try and cash in in this situation. Here they come again. And McCall almost finding Ali McCoyst. Take a little knock there in the process, but uh, running it off. Good tackle there by Ian Ferguson. The Rangers really did miss his strength in the middle of the field against Marseille. Actually, it's always difficult for the strikers in, in matches like this. Uh, McCoy's and Hitler have been ma man marked with Malyukov and Fokin with Bistrov just sweeping in behind. But they've made a positive start the front two to this match. They look well and truly capable of causing plenty, plenty of problems for the CS game defenders. Now, Rangers, of course, still unbeaten in this tournament. Here comes Hitler again. The goalkeeper being forced right outside the area. CSKA, We're trying to find Faisulin, but uh, Rangers standing firm, they seem to have settled down at the back. Long ball now from Stephen, looking for Haitley, Rick through to Durant, here's McCoyst, and just failing to catch that one properly. Yeah, I had to snatch at that one a little bit, Ali McCoyst, because Bistroff was coming to close him down and he really had no time to bring the ball down and control it. Ball gets lobbed over to the back post. Snapped at it a bit with his left foot and he had really no other option. Another feature of uh, Gudiev's play is that uh, he doesn't like to take goal kicks and uh, the defender has to do it for him. But when you think about it, uh, to lose uh, Dimitri Karin just a few days before a game like this. Uh, there's a blow for this side, and uh, they are going to lose more players in the days and weeks ahead. You really do wonder what they'll have left by the conclusion of this Champions League section. Well, Robertson it was who got his head to the ball. That's good defending by McCall. The header there allowing Andy Gorham to pick up the ball. Uh, quite a number of changes in the Moscow team as well from the one which actually clinched the championship uh, the last Soviet championship just over a year ago here they come now it's Faisulin Sergeyev's in the middle and another deflection but uh, in actual fact the referee is not allowing it well a real break for Rangers there. Yeah, this went to off Sergei even into the back of the net, but thankfully for Rangers, the, the, the ref, the, the linesman already, his flag, already had his flag up for an offside. Just deflected past Andy Gorham there. But the player that started that move, Faisal, and as a player that, as, as you mentioned, um, Jerry, Archie Knox and Billy Kirk have been over, watched this team, and noticed that Gutierrez was very poor in crossing, but they also noticed that Faisal is a very, very dangerous player indeed and a player that we're concerned about before this, this match tonight. So that was uh, Bushmanov's shot initially, uh, which came off Sergeyev. Kolotovkin just beaten to it by McPherson. This is Minko. Alyukov. 
Bistroff. Send it Sergei. He gets a touch through looking for Faisalin, but again the offside flag has gone up on the far side. The referee allowing play to continue, though. He's allowing the game to flow. So it's uh, good refereeing. And uh, Andy Gorham saying that's mine. So 20 minutes gone here in Bochum. And Rangers leading by one goal to nil. In Ferguson after 13 minutes. This is uh, Gushin breaking forward. Bushmanov to Minko. Takes the return. He packs a shot. Rangers closing him down, though. Well, this is good play. And Kasakov shot. Goes over the crossbar. A nice little bit of control here by Kasakov. Picks this ball up. Just cuts it inside David McPherson. But fortunately for Rangers, look that one way over the crossbar. A nice little bit of skill. Dmitry Kasakov, 20 years of age, is a bit of an unknown at the start of the season, but he uh, played as a substitute against Barcelona and scored the winning goal in that famous night for the Moscow side at the new camp. This is Dmitry Bistrov. Malyukov. Olatovkin playing it forward. Again, the masters are breaking out of defence. This is Gushin. The ball comes off Robertson. That's good control. And again, it was Kasakov. And he's obviously a player that uh, Rangers will have to watch closely. That was a great bit of control. Um, the CSKA side like to push Gushen and Kolotovkin into forward positions and get crosses in, but it was a delightful bit of control here by Kasakov, but never, never really quite connected with the shot. So Kasakov causing Rangers one or two problems. But still Rangers leading by one goal to nil. This is John Brown. For the head of Hitley. So we're now midway through the first half. This is Kolotovkin being pursued by Durant. Vice in there as well. He's got plenty of strength. Well, a little bit of a kick there by Ian Durant, and uh, you really will have to watch that. The referee. Awarding the free kick and uh, giving a word of warning and Durant uh, does have uh, a yellow card against his name. So another booking tonight would put him out of the next match. There's a lovely little turn again by Kasakov. It's Hitley winning it, but it breaks away to Vismanov. Bistrov to Minko. Trying to play it forward. It's a second touch at it. Olatovkins on this left side, that's where it's played. Shut down there by Trevor Stephen. Uh, McPherson has to provide the cover. In actual fact, uh, the referee is giving the ball Rangers way here. A free kick against Kolotovkin. This is Faisulin. Sergei's racing away in front of him. Good challenge there by Ferguson. This is Trevor Stephen to Durant. Ferguson again. McCall. Mikhailichenko. 
Again, he's looking for the head of Hitley. Again, Hitley wins it. It just breaks away from McCoy still. Oh, mistake there by David Roberts. It's picked up by Sergeyev. By Zulins in the middle. Still Sergeyev, but uh, too many Rangers defenders there. Now it's Mikhailichenko, a chance for Rangers to counter-attack. This is Durant. McCall. He's trying to find McCoy there. But, uh, CSKA have it again. This is Kolotovkin. Certainly has the pace to bother Trevor Stephen. He's got the trouble for Rangers. Robertson gets a touch. Still not probably clear. Durant's in there though. Now it's Hitley. And he wins the free kick against Sergei Fokin. Again, Mark Hitley doing a power of work and uh, prepared to take a knock or two as well. That was a tremendous bit of pace Kolotovkin showed there, bursting down that left there. He left uh, Trevor Stephen in his way. This is Bushmanov. Kolotovkin again. By Sulin. Very tricky player, this. Loves to run at defenders. Kasakov. Mm -hmm. Isolin's in there again. This is Minko trying to break through. That's Gushin. Partly cleared by Ferguson. And CSKA pushing Rangers deeper into defence here. And they do up an unrelenting pace throughout the 90 minutes every time they get the ball they tend to do something useful with it but here's Ellie McCoy nice little flick there to Hitley Durant running in support Trevor Stevens breaking forward as well Mikhailichenko's there this is Mikhailichenko lobs it through now looking for Ellie McCoy Blocked by the goalkeeper, and Rangers win the corner kick. Well, close to getting the second goal there, Rangers. Michaela Chenko just scoops this one up there. Over behind, finds Ali McCoy. Never made particularly good contact, but the goalkeeper hand handled that one. That would have been another goal for Rangers. He was due to do something right, the goalkeeper. I think he is more of a, a shot stopper and uh, reflex goalkeeper than... Uh, Really good at dealing with the high ball. It's a bit of a wasted uh, corner kick from Mikhail Lachenko. Gets another chance here, though, to put it over. There's Durant getting his head to it. Mikhail Lachenko's there again. And that's good work by Hatley. That's Durant. Again, it's aimed at Hitley's head. And Fokin got the vital touch there. Plays it forward now to Bishmanov. So the halftime entertainment has uh, started a bit early. Certainly the Rangers fans will be quite delighted if the team can go in ahead. They're leading by one goal to nil. Again, Hitley gets a touch, but uh, there's no one in support. one of five Moscow clubs and they've been pretty impressive this season Torpedo knocking out Manchester United and uh, Spartak taking care of Liverpool 
There's also a Dynamo Kiev, of course, um, Rangers know from the past, and uh, Lokomotiv. And uh, if you speak to the likes of Mikhail Chenko, he'll tell you that's the equivalent of something like uh, eight old firm matches in Moscow during the course of a year. Played in front of enormous crowds. Again, the Russians content to knock it about. And uh, certainly that shot uh, doesn't worry Andy Gorham. So just over half an hour gone. And there's the story of the night so far. Ian Ferguson after 13 minutes. The ball taking a bit of a deflection after a mistake by the goalkeeper. But they all count. And uh, two points would put Rangers in a marvellous position tonight. Giving them three from the opening two games. Marseille at home to Bruges tonight in the other Group A match. And here's Faisoulin. With the ball bobbling upwardly there. It's blocked by Robertson. The shot going in from Karsakov again. This is Ferguson for Rangers. To Mikhailichenko. Support comes from Robertson. And the challenge goes in from Alexei Gushin. This is Durant for Rangers, being watched by Minko. And Rangers get the throw. In fact, a free kick, says the referee. It was played in quickly, looking for McCoy. It was Bistroff who got his head to the ball. It's one back by McCall, but uh, that's a free kick against the Rangers player. Playing just his seventh European tie tonight. Both clubs uh, know they're in uh, £210,000 per point tonight. A lot of money. The Rangers players on uh, £2,000 a point per man. But I'm quite sure at the moment money is the last thing on their minds. Faisulin. Asakov gets the touch there. This is Sergeev. Bolotovkin is on the left. That's where it's played. It certainly caused a few problems. Puts in the cross to the far side of the penalty area. It's well headed clear by Ian Fergus. Now it's Mikhailichenko. Mikhailichenko losing out. Oh no, it's uh, Vasily Minko. John Brown does well for Rangers. Well, a chance to do something here. A lot of the Russians cut up field. This is Durant through to Brown. Trevor Steven is running in support. So too is Durant. It's Durant again. Ball takes a deflection. Hitley's in there. It's Robertson's header. So the referee giving the free kick. And now it's with McCall. Yushin is going to beat him. And it's played in for Hatley. And it goes behind for the goal kick. Well, a complaint there uh, from uh, Sergei Fokin that uh, Hatley was using an elbow, but uh, I think the Russian player uh, starting to feel the pressure a bit. He did handle Hatley well in the earlier exchanges, but uh, he's certainly feeling the pace now. And Hatley, of course, put in such a power of work against Marseille, he gradually wore them down. We'll be hoping to repeat that tonight. Yeah, he's certainly getting the better of Hukin now, and um, the, the front two have been um, very impressive for Rangers tonight. Haley McCoy's worked very hard, and every time they get the ball, they're looking dangerous, and as if they might create something. This is Minko. A rather poor effort there from the 21-year-old. They are a very young side Polotovkin at the age of uh, 27 is their oldest player Baisulin in fact uh, is just 19 years of age so 
That's Trevor Stephen. Hitley got a little touch there. Well, Hitley scored against uh, each of the teams in this uh, tournament so far. Uh, against Lingbe, Leeds and Marseille. Three European goals. This is McPherson. Aimed at McCoist. So just under 10 minutes of this first half left. The Rangers are leading by one goal to nil. Again, the referee allowing the play to flow. It's a good clearance by Gorham. This is David Robertson. Ferguson plays it through, looking for Haitley. Is it Minko? Fokin. Ian Ferguson chasing back there with Gushmanov. This is Gushmanov again, looking for Sergeev. Sergeev, who signed uh, two years ago from Rotor Volgograd. Well, Hitley fouled there by Fokin. So perhaps a chance for Rangers to apply some more pressure. Let's quickly take in the shot one to McCall. Stephen again. It's away from Kulatovkin. Stephen! Here's McCoist! And just inches away from Ali McCoist. Great play that by Trevor Stephen. Well, that was a terrific effort here by Trevor Stephen. Looks up, thunders in a left foot shot. Goalkeeper makes a good, good save, you think, initially. But palms it down straight to Ali McCoist. And it just slithered past the post there. Very close indeed. So just under eight minutes of the first half left. The well, Rangers have certainly had their chances in this first half. But no doubt delighted to be a goal ahead. And with one or two frights as well. A real carnival atmosphere here. And a fair size of crowd. I think, uh, number more than uh, had been expected. The stadium which is uh, fully roofed, uh, the main stand and the opposite stand seated and uh, terracing behind either goal. It's a good neat stadium. I remember uh, talking to Buddy McLeod about it uh, a while back and uh, he said uh, from his time here that uh, certainly the German players rate it uh, as high as number three in the country always has a good atmosphere. This is Trevor Stephen. Plays it back there to McPherson. It's aimed at Haitley. Fokin's in there though. It's Ferguson playing it to McCall. This is Durant. Looking for Ferguson again. Long kick, it's met by Robertson. This is Sergeyev laying it off, looking for Korsakov. It's Bistrov to Bushmanov. Just under six minutes of the first half left. And I'm sure Rangers would be quite happy to take this lead with them to the dressing room. And no doubt uh, Walter Smith and uh, Mark Knox can uh, put a few words of wisdom their way. But overall, it's been uh, a good performance by Rangers after that early shot, uh, early fright, when uh, Robertson had to clear from practically the goal line. 
Here come the Russians again. It's cut out by Robertson. This is Durant. Robertson using his pace. McCoy's in the middle, so too is Haitley. It was cut out there, though, by Dmitry Bistrov. Terrific through ball there, Pien Durant for David Robertson. And it's terrific when you've got somebody like that and up down the, the flanks at such pace. Terrific pace, David Roberts. So we're inside the final five minutes. Well, again, the goalkeeper looking highly nervous. He just does not like the high ball coming in at all. And uh, there was no real pressure on him there at all. And he dropped it. Well, he doesn't like taking goal kicks, he doesn't like crosses, he uh, doesn't seem to like making saves. He's a very poor goalkeeper indeed. So no, Archie Knox, the assistant manager, Gary McSwiggan to his right. It's aimed at Faisulin. McPherson's in there ahead of him though. CSKA Moscow nil, Rangers one. Just four minutes of the first half left. The ball goes out for the throw to Rangers. Well, CSKA beat uh, Valor Rekovic uh, in the first round, 1-0 uh, away and 4-2 at home. And then uh, a famous win over Barcelona after a 1-1 draw in Moscow and the 1-3-2 uh, at the New Camp Stadium, but lost the opening Champions League game 1-0 to Bruges and uh, defeat tonight would really leave them struggling. They're all sent high out of play by Bistrov. He's been with uh, CSKA from uh, the youth ranks. This is John Brown for Rangers. Going for Mikhaila Chenko. Ferguson looking for McCoyst. Good defending by Malyukov, taking the pressure off the goalkeeper. This is Bistrov. fine season he's had so we're inside the final two minutes of this first half this is John Brown to McCall it's McPherson this is Fokin to Minko Tofkins to his left. That ball was just out of play. It's uh, a throw in to Rangers. And Ian Ferguson getting through a power of work. Yes, yeah, it's a super first half, Jerry. I mean, a goal, a goal to his credit, although it's, it's admittedly it took a wicked deflection, but he's, he's got through a power of work in the middle of the park and spread the ball about as well. It's been a good midfield performance in the first half. Ian Durant knocking some lovely passes in behind the Russian defenders. So we're now inside the final 60 seconds of this first half. This is Bistrov, the CSKA sweeper. Switch of play to Kolotovkin. Faisulin. Well, 
almost giving it away. He's in there again, pursued by John Brown. And a free kick awarded against the Rangers defender. So just 19 years of age, he'll set by Sullen. He joined the club in 1990, made just three appearances uh, last year, but uh, been tipped uh, to go right to the top. Hugo Bruges, the Bruges coach, says that uh, he reckons Faisalin will become one of the great players in European football. So we're now into injury time. Rangers don't want to lose one here. It's put away by Trevor Stephen. This is Ferguson to Haitley. Mikhail Chenko. Well hooked away from him there by Fokin. This is Robertson for Rangers to Mikhail Chenko. Robertson again using that pace of his. Driving it across goal. And again the keeper looking none too happy. And you can see the worry in his face there as he looks towards Malyukov. But there in fact goes the half-time whistle. So a fine first half for Rangers. Certainly they've been very strong in the middle of the park. McCoist and Haitley have worked extremely hard up front. A good overall performance. The half-time score here in Bochum. CSKA Moscow nil. Rangers one. Half-time then in Germany. CSKA nil. Rangers one. We're getting a lot of calls about the band which keeps on striking up during the first half. Uh, they've, there they are, they've left the terracing and they're now on the park. They've decided they're going to entertain everybody. Um, quite a bunch of lads, Terry. Very good, I mean they should be good really. The amount of practicing they've been doing in the stands during the match. Um, I think it's the equivalent of the uh, uh, Moscow Lark Hall flute band they've brought along, so <laughs> it's quite good. An entertaining bunch. Davy, uh, let's get to the serious business then. Um, Rangers won up, but I mean in 15 seconds, CSK in Moscow had them on the rack and we thought they're going to lose an early goal here. Yes, yeah, certainly Rangers have been involved in this tournament in a couple of goals in the first minute and uh, everybody thought here we were going to be involved in it again. A tremendous scramble on the line. It was a great move from the CSK side and only managed to get it away. Nearly one down there, very lucky in the end up. It was a great save by Andy Gorham there, wasn't it? And here comes the scramble yeah. now. John Brown's in there, of course. And all of a sudden the ball breaks loose and uh, David Robertson comes in with a great challenge at the end there. Mm. Yeah, because, um, Rangers were lucky to get away with that, but uh, having said that, Rangers then dominated the rest of the what the next 20-30 um, minutes. Sure, and of course they go up the, the field and score, Ian Ferguson shot, but it took a deflection, Terry. Uh, yes, it did. A, it, it obviously took a massive deflection. It was a great ball into the box. Um, goalkeeper challenges here. Mark uh, Hetley does well, holds the player off. Then a good deflection there, and uh, as luck would have it, you know, Rangers could have been a goal down, but um, they go a goal up. And Fergie comes onto the ball well here. He's obviously re well renowned for his shots on goal, and uh, I think that one might have been going wide, but uh, took a great deflection and went in. Keeper doesn't look confident at all in these situations. I think the more Rangers play high balls in, they could get a lot more out of this game. I think Jerry and Gordon spotted that right away too, Davey. He looks yeah. very uncomfortable. Yeah, he looks very edgy. Um, a couple after that, he's come for as well and doesn't look confident at all. Mark Haley's given him a hard time. Mind you, they gave us a fright when they went up the field. Now, luckily, Sergeev was offside, but the ball went in the net. I think we can see it. There it is. Faisulin, yes, right in the thick of the action, Terry. He's been their best player, really, apart from uh, uh, Karasov. But the ball breaks here. It's going, it's going like Fergie's shot. It's going well wide. But uh, Rangers' head squeezed up. See, like David Robertson just comes off his marker there, and he's well offside. In my opinion, he's uh, a good few yards offside. But luckily, the linesman spotted it, had his flag up, and that was it. A great chance for Rangers again, Davy, set up by Mikhailichenko with a delightful lob, and McCoy's got on the end of it. Very unlucky not to score. Yeah, a beautiful piece of skill here by Alexei Mikhailichenko. He just lifts it over the defence. Nala McCoy didn't know the keeper was coming out here. He tried to lift it over his head, I think. Uh, very unlucky, but a good save in the end up. It's a smashing lob, isn't it? Yeah. Ali watches the ball all the time here, doesn't watch the keeper. Gets a good connection in the keeper. I think actually, Does well in the end, doesn't he? I think he actually hit the keeper more than anything else. But. Mm -hmm. I mean, the keeper came out and blocked it, so he yeah. you know, got his hands up and did well. But, uh, I mean, Ali's been unlucky, really. Could have had a, um, at least two goals in the first half. OK. Terry, Davey, thanks. We'll take another break there in a couple of minutes. More of the key moments from that first half. Hello again. Have a look at this. While we were in the commercial break, what were the band up to? Well, as they say, the wheels came off the bogey. Um, 
thoroughly enjoying themselves. They're really letting their hair down now, Terry. Yes, well, we've uh, um, been uh, lucky enough to see all the band at half time. They've been fantastic. I'm sure some of the Rangers players have booked them for the end of season bash. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. Well, back to the action. It's 1 0 Rangers uh, in Bochum at the moment. A tremendous chance, Davey, f fell to uh, Ali McCoist after Trevor Stephen brought out a tremendous save in Gutierrez. Yeah, Trevor Stephen hits a tremendous shot here with his left foot, just gets away for the player. The goalkeeper again makes a good save. Mm -hmm. out. Ali McCoist done everything right here, he put it beyond the goalkeeper. But unfortunately, it hits the, the post and rolls out. Very unlucky again. A great save by the goalkeeper. Nice the shot, actually, the, actually, the shot swerved tremendously. The keeper did well to get yeah. both hands in line with the ball, but. Uh, he was fortunate, really, when the ball did drop to Ali. Ali just put it away. I think Ali did everything right, didn't he? Was, he? Came he was in, very sharp. In, got a good contact on the ball, and it just goes past the post. I mean, Ali McCoy was very sharp on Mikhail it. Mikhail was in a good position. Had Ali mishit it, even. Yeah. You know, as Ali normally does, mishits the balls across to the goal. Yeah. yeah, to put it in. Uh, but uh, <laughs> just a bit uh, just, uh, unfortunate for Rangers. Uh, Ali hit it too well. The keeper did well there then, Terry, but just on half-time, it didn't look too good with David Robertson's running cross. He wasn't sure what was going to happen, was he? No, it was a good run by David Robertson. He's, he's done well in the game so far, and a good cross. Uh, a good cross there, right across the face of the goal. Alan McCoy with his hands on his head. Probably should have, uh, or normally the polecat anticipates those crosses so well, but uh, this time, like towards the end of the first half, when he's probably thinking about his cup of tea and everything else, um, it just like goes begging. But um, a great run, a great cross. Let's not get carried away though, David. The Russians are still very much in it. They look good going forward. Yeah, I think so. I think uh, Rangers have done well in the first half and, and in a good position at 1 0, but I think. Five and ten minutes spell in the middle there showed you just how good the Russians can be. Some of their uh, one-touch football is brilliant and Rangers will really have to be on their toes in the second half. If they let them through, there was a few chances there they could have got one. And they'll really need to keep them on their toes to keep them out. You rightly mentioned uh, Kar Kar Karsakov and uh, Faisal and Terry. They look good when they're going forward. That's not easy for you to say, though, is it, Jim? Really? <laughs> Thank you. Faisal and uh, Karasov, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh... Those two especially, I mean, Faisal in the 11 really has got pace and he goes at people and everything else. But for me, the key for Rangers now, they've got a good lead, they've got one now. They've been a bit fortunate. They've been un unfortunate they haven't scored more goals. So fine, they're one nil up. If the midfield section now doesn't go chasing balls, Stuart McCall doesn't go chasing, diving in all over the place. If they remain solid and not allow the balls to be played in behind them, which uh, the Russians have done in the first half, and then the, that midfield player receiving the ball can go at the Rangers' back four. If they're solid unit now, I can see them building on this 1-0 lead. OK, let's hope so. Let's go back over then. The teams are back on the field in Bochum. So we'll go back to the Ruhr Stadium and rejoin Jerry McNee and Gordon McQueen for the second half of CSKA Moscow against Rangers. Jerry. Uh, welcome back, everyone. Uh, both sides back on the field. And uh, the fans uh, certainly had an interesting halftime. The Red Army Band uh, certainly kept them all going now some uh, statistics from the first half Rangers with nine goal attempts and uh, it certainly gives them a lot of hope for this second half when you think they'd only two shots in target in the match against Marseille and forced just two corners that night and said at the time they couldn't play as badly again and certainly giving uh, a very good account of themselves here this evening so a big Rangers support in the Ruhr Stadion so the second half gets underway and just a quick check around shows no changes in either side. Uh, Rangers uh, on the bench have uh, Stephen Presley, Neil Murray, David Hagen and Gary McSwigan. Again, uh, the young players on the substitutes bench, Ali Maxwell, the substitute goalkeeper. This is uh, Bistrov. The offside flag is up against Sergiev. So the free kick goes Rangers' way. What Rangers will really have to watch here is that this team will plug away no matter what. Of course, there were two goals down uh, at the new camp in Barcelona. And to come back to win 3-2. That's the type of team they are. So Rangers can take absolutely nothing for granted. And I'm quite sure that would be the half-time message from Walter Smith and Archie Knox. So again, it's uh, aimed at the head of Hitley. And again, Rangers will want to put as much pressure as possible on Gutiev in the CSKA goal. But Trevor Stevens ball headed on by Hitley. It breaks to Durant. This is McCoist. In comes Mikhailichenko. And the goalkeeper does well there. Well, he's certainly a good shot stopper. He does have good reflexes. It was a great little turn there by Ali McCoy to get in the shot in the first place. We've been knocking the goalkeeper the full first 45 minutes, but he makes a terrific save there. 
and brave goalkeeping to dive at the feet of Mikhailichenko. And in fairness to the goalkeeper, he had an excellent uh, second half uh, against uh, Club Bruges. But uh, Rangers have spotted his weakness and they're certainly attempting to play towards it. There's Ali McCoyst uh, taken out of the plate, but uh, he's straight back in his feet. And the Rangers have the free kick. Yeah, certainly the game in the first the first half is played in a very sporting fashion. Just a little bit of a flick of the foot there and they've sent Ali McCoy sprawling. Well, McCoy's in the thick of the early action. A bit of jostling going on in the penalty area. And it's played out to Trevor Stephen. McCoy gets the touch. Mikhail Lichenko's in there. Yeah, I think Rangers will be trying to get the ball into wide areas, Trevor Stephen and Mikhailochenko, and get crosses and put this goalkeeper under pressure because, it was, as we've seen in the first half, he just doesn't handle them at all well. Well, in the two previous uh, big occasions, Rangers uh, faced, uh, what call now former Soviet sides. Uh, they beat Moscow Dynamo in the 1972 European Cup Winners' Cup Final in Barcelona. And more recently in 1987, had a terrific uh, win over Dynamo Kiev at Ibrox, which was uh, one of Rangers' best performances on the European stage in many a year. So they do have the habit of uh, beating these sides. But a long way to go yet in this particular match. I don't, I don't think the Moscow side will, will change their, their pattern of play at all. They've been very patient build-up, knocking the ball around. Some lovely one-touch football they played in the first half. And I don't think they'll go chasing the game. Archie Knox uh, was making the point this morning that uh, they are such a, a youthful side. Uh, they're almost too young to know fear. And uh, they just battle on. So now they perhaps have a chance to do something. And free kick. Just about midway inside the Rangers half of the field. It's Bushmanov playing it forward to Faisulin. And Mikhailichenko deep in his own defence. It's Mikhailichenko again. It was Gushin stepping in. Bushmanov plays it forward to Faisulin. And Ian Ferguson concedes the free kick. Well, Ferguson sticking all the way there with his man, but uh, conceding the, the foul. So that's 50 minutes gone, and the shot going well wide of target from Oleg Malyukov. Good steady performer in this side. Andy Gorham has uh, had 12 shutouts in 27 games this season. He's lost just 18 goals. He's not been in a losing side uh, for 36 games. That stretches back eight months. is Kolotovkin who caused Rangers one or two problems with his pace in the first half that's Faisulin nice close skills again from Faisulin Kolotovkin gets in the cross it's cut out though by McPherson breaks off Durant this is Minko and Mikhailichenko again deep in his own half good first touch there from Haitley Durant does well Gushin is giving chase, still Durant, and he wins the free kick. And the referee is unhappy about this. And a yellow card is shown to Alexei Gushin. So 
it's the first uh, booking of the night. He hasn't had a yellow card in this tournament so far. But it puts him under pressure now for the rest of this match. It was uh, good running by Durant. So Mikhailichenko hits the free kick. It lays in there. And it's Joaquin getting it clear. Again, you could see a bit of hesitancy in the CSKA defense. They don't look at all comfortable when the high ball is played in. And that's uh, David Robertson. He's a bit of a long throw specialist. Liam's this at the head of Haitley. In comes McCall. And the ball goes behind for the goal kick. Well, many of the CSKA team which uh, won the championship last year have moved on. Uh, three of them went to the Spanish club Espanol, Dmitry Kuznetsov, uh, Dmitry Geliamin and Igor Korneyev. They've even had a change of manager. Uh, Sadarin, their coach, uh, was lured away to look after the Russian international side. And now they have uh, Gennady Kostilev. That ball goes out of play for the throw-in to the Russian side. Still very much an army side. The chairman is an army general. And uh, the manager holds the rank of major. So still Rangers leading by one goal to nil. This is Minko. Kasakov trying to get away from Brown. Fails to do so. This is Ferguson. Well, that was a very close decision on Ali McCoist. He looked in line with the last defender, but uh, the flag went up immediately. Yeah, I think the linesman got that one right. If Ali McCoist had maybe just delayed his, his run a second or so, it was oceans of space. And the flag is up at the other end. And this time it's a free kick to Rangers. So Andy got him well out of his area. Won all of the Scottish honours in 1992. Been a terrific year for him. This is Trevor Stephen. Getting in a good cross. And again, the keeper taking no chance. This is my call to Mikhailichenko. Nice turn by Mikhailichenko. Switch of play by McCall to Durant. So just over 10 minutes of the second half gone. The Rangers leading by a goal to nil. Ian Ferguson after 13 minutes. Another high ball's aimed in at Haitley. Again, he gets the touch. It's cut out though by Bistroff. John Brown does well there. Looks in ahead of Faisulin. Now it's Durant. Played through for McCoist. But that was always uh, just too much for him. And uh, shadowed all the way by Oleg Malyukov. Brown does well again. Trevor Stephen sends it there to Robertson. This is McCall. Substitutes warming up just below us. This is Minko. Robertson does well. 
Durant. Durant by Bistrov. Play through to Sergeyev. This is Faisulin. And away by Mikhail Chenko. Still not properly cleared though. The long one now from McPherson. Hayley does well. And Gushin is chasing back. And he makes the tackle. Rangers have the throw in. Alexei Gushin. The Rangers are no particular hurry to get on with things. Again, Robertson sends a high one looking for Haitley. Looking forward in. This is Kolotovkin. And the offside flag goes up against Sergeyev. the Rangers flags and banners in the background and there are the offside statistics well, it's not bad when you think uh, how often Rangers were uh, cut offside in the game against Marseille but uh, CSK you now about to make a change that's uh, Alexander Grishin who's uh, ready to come on Bistroff. Haitley lays it off there. Ferguson forward to McCall. It's Haitley again. Good ball for Robertson. This is Mikhail Chenko. Can he weave some magic here? It's Haitley! What a chance that was for Haitley. The early ball played in by Mikhail Chenko. It was a good build up there by, by Rangers. Wakilachenko just picks out Mark Haitley. Lovely little cross at the edge of the 18 yard box, but Mark Haitley just gets under that one a little bit. So the change has been made. Grishin comes on for Minko. Well, Grishin uh, played in the under 18 Soviet side, uh, which won the UEFA tournament for that age group. This is Kolotovkin. And he loses out to Ferguson. Good running off the ball there by Durant. So just over an hour gone. And Rangers still leading by one goal to nil, but John Brown's under pressure here. Again, he reacts well. He's had a fine game, John Brown. That's McPherson. He's through to McCoist. Haitley, McCoist again. Ferguson, playing it through for Mikhail Lachenko. But, uh, the first touch letting him down there. And uh, the throw-in goes to CSKA Moscow. It was a very good bit of defending there by John Brown because Ian Durant made a hash of things out wide in the right, tried the pass back. John Brown intercepted it, read it well, and tidied the mess up. He's looked rock solid in the heart of the Rangers' defence tonight. McCall does well there. And he wins the free kick for Rangers. Some good aggressive play by Stuart McCall. He's obviously enjoying himself. when it is in fact Robertson sending in the cross this is Kolotovkin and he's happy to accept the throw
And this is the substitute, Grishin. Played through there by Bushmanov. This is Durant to McPherson, who won it initially. A slack ball there by Trevor Stephen, but uh, Rangers get away with it. It's not been a particularly good week for the Russian clubs in Europe, or the Belgian clubs for that matter, and of course uh, Club Bruges also in this Group A. But it could turn out to be a very good week indeed for Rangers if they can hold on to this lead. And Davy Dodds there with uh, Archie Knox, Ali Maxwell nearest to us. And Haithley wins the free kick. Joaquin, the offender. So it's David Robertson. Just touched down there by McPherson. Grishin's in there. So it is Mikhail Lichenko. This is Robertson. Rangers starting to accept themselves again. This is Robertson. It's a good cross. Mikhailichenko, Durant! And the corner kick is awarded. That was terrific play by Rangers. What a lovely touch by Mikhailichenko. Yeah, great crossfield ball here from Davy Robertson. Lovely touch from Mikhailichenko. Sets up Durant. Didn't quite get on the end of that one, Ian Durant, but great running again. This is Faisulin, who's been forced to come very deep indeed. It's well cut out there by Ferguson. McCoy's gets the touch to Haitley. Ferguson's through again, he's onside. Well, that's an incredible situation. The defender didn't know where he was. It was Malyukov. He collided with his own goalkeeper. Great play by Ferguson. Yeah, it looked as if he was in an offside position originally, but the linesman never put his flag up. Caused all sorts of confusion in the box there, then brave goalkeeping to deny Ali, Ali McCoy to goal. But he certainly looked in an offside position when he broke forward. But a good cut back here and all sorts of confusion there. I think Ali McCoy's boot just catching Gutierrez in the, in the head there. Uh, you've got to hand it to the goalkeeper there. He's uh, not had the best of matches, but uh, he wasn't lacking in courage. But uh, what a mix-up uh, involving himself and Oleg Malyukov, who is the most experienced player. So Gutierrez has recovered. This is Robertson for Rangers. And Durant giving it away. Faisulin's in here. And John Brown found the goalkeeper. Ferguson wins it back. Now it's McCoyst. Trevor Stephen, lovely touch again by Haitley to McCoyst. And Haitley is in an offside position. Well, Mikhailichenko had broken in a bit of space on the left, but uh, McCoyst again tried to pick out Haitley. And he was just offside. So the free kick to CSKA Moscow. That's the story of the evening so far. Rangers will feel they should have added to that score. They've certainly had a few chances. The offside flag this time goes up against Faisulin. So the free kick to Rangers. It's quickly taken. This is McPherson looking for Haitley. This is McCoy to Mikhailichenko. So just too much in that one for him. But again, a lovely touch uh, by Haitley. Meanwhile, CSKA are about to make the second change. Vasily Ivanov is the man waiting to come on. And off will go Alexei Gushin. So Gushin leaves the field. And on comes Ivanov, who's a former under 21 player. 
and he's not the Ivanov who played for the CIF in uh, Sweden. He was signed from Zenit Leningrad, which is uh, now St. Petersburg, of course. So a free kick to CSKA. This is Bushmanov. Going for Faiz Sulin. Picked up now by Ian Durant. He's supported by Trevor Stephen. Long one for Haitley. He's headed down though by Dmitry Bistrov. This is Ferguson. To Mikhailichenko. Robertson's well forward on the left. Mikhailichenko they're playing it through to Durant. He's quickly closed down. Haitley gets the touch to McCoyst. McCoy surrounded though by Russian players. Now the counter-attack could be on here. And they're pouring men out of defence. And the substitute is calling for it on the far side. Ivanov is cut out though by Robertson. Picked up now by Mikhailichenko. And he wins the free kick. And Mikhailichenko will be enjoying this occasion he was such a celebrated player in what was the Soviet Union now of course uh, he's eligible to play for the Ukraine which has become an independent state in fact the Soviet League uh, breaking up into 13 uh, different leagues here come Rangers again oh, that's a magnificent effort by Robertson and there was a bit of a bend on the ball yeah, I think everybody's expecting a little cross to the back post there, but David Robertson just looks up. Ball bobbles a bit, but he still makes a great connection. Wasn't that far away, that one? Well, he's still waiting for his uh, first goal this season. He did score last season, but uh, he doesn't get too many of them. In fact, he had to wait four years as an Aberdeen player before he hit the back of the net. But, uh, this is Ferguson to McCoyst. Stephen. Well, a second goal from Rangers just now could really finish it all off. He gets in the cross. Haitley's going in there with the goalkeeper. And again, he has to punch it away. This is Kolotovkin. Cut out by Mikhailichenko, but the offside flag had gone up uh, just below us. And it's uh, quickly taken. Meanwhile, uh, Gutiev uh, still struggling a bit, I think, from that earlier knock he took from Ali McCoyst. Here's McCall looking for Haitley. That was well cut out, though, by Fokin. So that's uh, 70 minutes gone in this match. Rangers still leading by one goal to nil. This is Faisal in, though. He's supported by Kasakov. And cut out by Mikhailichenko. It's a long one for McCoy to chase. But Rangers will need a second goal here to make sure. This team will carry a threat right to the final whistle. This is Bushmanov. This is Grishin. And the shot uh, ably handled from Grishin by Andy Gorham. <coughs> That's Hitley's touch. Of play from Grishin to Kolotovkin. We watch carefully by Trevor Stephen. He gets in a dangerous cross. It comes off the head of John Brown. 
Rangers under pressure here and it's Ferguson who sweeps it clear this is Haitley it's a good first touch by Haitley and Falkin slides in to concede the throw in actually the front, front two for Rangers tonight McCoyce and Haitley have worked really hard Haitley in particular showed some lovely touches chased absolutely everything and gave Falkin a very uncomfortable evening well, Kostilev the CSKA manager looking rather impassive another turn of uh, Ian Ferguson to midfield has made such a change to Rangers tonight from the match against Marseille there he's in there again winning it to Durant now it's Mikhailichenko Ferguson again uh, the ball goes out for the throw-in to the Russian side. A switch of play by Bistrov. It's Bistrov again. There's certainly no panic from this side. They'll continue to knock it about. They'll probe for openings. And then they'll use the tremendous pace up front. The Rangers have matched them well so far. He's a man who spells danger every time, though. Faisulin, tricky player. And Trevor Stephen does well there. The ball bricks to McPherson. Off, knocks it forward headed away by Robertson picked up by McCall again Durant finds a bit of space through for McCoy it's a good running there by McCall on the far side no one spotted him this is Durant Ferguson Stephen there's McCall now Rangers showing a certain patience as well, not diving in, keeping possession. This is Brown to Robertson. And a bit of a wasted ball by Robertson. But he's uh, performed well tonight. is Bushmanov Grishin knocks it forward it's cleared though by McPherson Haitley makes the challenge Bistrov switches it to Kolotovkin it's cut out though by Ferguson it's left by Durant to McCoyst just under 15 minutes left and Rangers leading by one goal to nil this is McPherson breaking out of defence finding Trevor Stephen this is Haitley McCoyst McCall and it was nipped away at the last moment by Fokin and uh, McCall claiming the corner kick but uh, the referee who was well up with the play decides it's a goal kick yeah, it looked as if that may have been a corner kick for Rangers there, but once again, it was Mark Haitley with a good downward header at the back post. It's caused them all sorts of problems in the air tonight. And little Stuart McCall, as usual, battled away well in the middle of the park. Oh, a long one played through, headed away by Brown. Brown's in there again, what a game he's having. Finds Mikhailichenko. Haitley. That's a free kick against Fokin. And that is trouble for him. He already has two yellow cards against him in the tournament. And that now puts him out of the game against Marseille on March the 3rd, which will be played in Leverkusen. 
Yeah, a little bit of a lunge from the defender there, maybe a little bit of frustration creeping into his game. But I think um, as the referee's probably booked him for persistent fouling because he has warned him on several occasions. Faithfully receiving some treatment. 11 goals is not so far this season. And uh, how well he's played for Rangers in Europe. As I said earlier, scoring against Lingby, Leeds and Marseille. And uh, he has a terrific reputation throughout the continent, no doubt about that. So he's back on his feet and Rangers have the free kick. It's John Brown to take it. Again, it's aimed at Hatley. And the defender will be under even more pressure now with that uh, yellow card against him. And uh, no doubt he'll be a bit crestfallen as well, knowing that uh, he misses the next game. Ian Ferguson is uh, in exactly the same boat. If you've picked up uh, two yellow cards, you automatically miss a game. If you get a third one, you miss the next game. So UEFA really clamping down. This is Fokin. That's uh, Robertson for Rangers, but the ball drifts out of play for the throw in to CSKA. This is Bushmanov. Bistrov switching it to Kolotovkin. Tovkin again. And McPherson gets it clear, but a bit of a lunge by John Brown. And the free kick is awarded to the Russians. The Rangers playing a very patient game. This is Bushmanov to Grishin. The substitute is cut out again by Ferguson. Grishin gets it again, though. Bushmanov again good work by Ferguson and it's nipped forward there by McCall to Mikhailichenko chance perhaps for Rangers to do something here Mikhailichenko to Durant now it's Haitley that's good awareness by Haitley who finds Trevor Stephen Rangers knocking the ball about with a lot of confidence but uh, Trevor Stephen just taking on one player too many there this is Bistro Through for Sergeyev, he controls that well. That's a good tackle by McPherson. And that's Kolotovkin. It's Fokin playing it through to Grishin. And Robertson steps in for Rangers. Plays it to Durant. McCoy's ahead of him. McPherson's breaking out the defence. It's pushed just too far in front of the striker. So just under 10 minutes left. Rangers leading by a goal to nil. Kolotovkin to Faisulin. The chance on here, the shot going in from Grishin. Well, I think you've got to expect that the Moscow side will make a little bit of a push. We only 10 minutes remaining, but to me, they look a little bit jaded. I know there have been some complaints from, from the Russians that they were, they're short of match practice. In fact, haven't played since the last round against Bruges. They look just a little bit tired to me. Players that are making forward runs aren't really getting back into defensive positions. And they've had to <clears throat> do a lot of their training indoors, Gordon, because of the, the weather in Moscow. That's uh, obviously a big problem for them. Well, the Rangers fans getting right behind the team, cheering them over these final few minutes, just under nine minutes left.
versus Grishin. Kasakov plays it to Ivanov. Ivanov again. Italy's back. But, uh, slips at the vital moment. Ivanov does well. Grishin got the touch there. The chance on here. Gushmanov's shot is blocked. This is Kolotov now coming forward. And John Brown steps in. But, uh, the referee has awarded a free kick to Rangers. Yeah, John Brown read that situation really well there, but thankfully for Rangers, just before that, Bushman offered a great opportunity to at least get the ball in target. But hurried his shot a little bit. This is good defending here by John Brown. A real lunge there by Kolotovkin. So the free kick to Rangers. Eighthley gets the touch. Durant's through, the first time ball looking for McCoyst. Played off by Grishin. Just under seven minutes left, plus injury time. The offside flag is up uh, rather late. Free kick to Rangers who have shown a maturity of performance tonight. They defended uh, brilliantly in the match at Ellen Road and uh, successfully hit Leeds United on the break. And uh, tonight, after that early fight, they settled down defensively and have given a very mature performance indeed. They've done their homework well, uh, knowing that this is. Uh, a team which indulge, indulges in the classic counter-attack and we haven't seen too much of that the marking has been good so just under six minutes now and it's Haitley losing out though to Fokin this is Bistroff Karsakov. The switch to Vishmanov. It's cut out there by Mikhail Lichenko. And then he's conceded the free kick. Well, the break was almost on for Mikhail Lichenko. The free kick is quickly taken. It's with Ivanov. Forward now to Faisulin. And it was Robertson who got the touch. Just under five minutes left. This is Gushmanov. Well, everyone inside the Rangers half, apart from Gutiev. So, Rangers still leading by that Ian Ferguson goal after 13 minutes. This will be a terrific result for them if they can hold on to the scoreline. It is, after all, an away match. Yeah, I think I went here tonight, Jerry. will certainly rule CSK Moscow's hopes of qualifying completely out. But great result for Rangers. It stays the same. Keeps them well in touch with Marseille, who would expect we would beat Cruz this evening. And it might just boil down to Rangers or Marseille. That's where away goals would count. Uh, if the teams were tied in terms of goal difference, away goals would come into it. Uh, just between the two sides who are tied. But here come Rangers. Can they finish it off with some style here? It's Mikhailachenko trying to get forward. Still Mikhailachenko. And the ball is deflected behind for the corner. Yeah, I don't think Ali McCoyce is too happy there because Mikhailachenko tried the show and Ali McCoyce was just hovering around about eight yards out for goal with no defender near him. So Alex Mikhailichenko, who began the games against Lingby and Marseille at Ibrox. 
and he was a substitute at Elland Road. That's played to McCall. Durant again. And the ball going behind for the goal kick with just under three minutes left. Mark Gately got the nearest touch there. Again, the Rangers fans cheering on the team, whistling away. You, if I do have rather a, a complicated uh, system to, to sort out uh, the section winners, uh, if everything was level on goal difference, uh, say it was between uh, Marseille and Rangers, the fact that Marseille are the number one seats in the tournament. Uh, which way at their way to go into the final. You would think that uh, after six games, a playoff would be in order. But of course, there is uh, so much football these days, so many fixtures. So Rangers just a few minutes away from a very good victory, two minutes in fact. The side, as I said earlier, will Battle away to the final whistle. They do keep possession so well, and they've won themselves a free kick. Bushmanov fouled uh, by McCall. So Bushmanov gets back to his feet as uh, Rangers organize themselves defensively. And the shot from Grishin. Charged down. Again, everyone inside the Rangers half except Gutiev. Headed away. That's a good uh, header there from Robertson. With just under a minute left. Rangers in possession. Split down the line for Haitley. Go oh, by Malyukov. This is Kasakov. Vishmanov. Again. Ruin dropping back. This is Faisulin. He sends it wide. And the ball dropping behind for the goal kick. A disappointing effort there from Sergei Kolotovkin. Yeah, they play some lovely stuff in uh, the Moscow side, but really they just don't pose a big enough threat up front. And really haven't troubled um, John Brown or, or Dave McPherson in, in any big way this evening. But, uh, Ian Ferguson Gordon has certainly made a big difference. And he's put in a power of work there in the midfield. Great running also by Ian Durant. Yeah, certainly the midfield would have been a very impressive area for, for Rangers tonight. But for me, the, the outstanding the outstanding Rangers player has been Mark Haitley. It's been a terrific game. Well, he's had a very good tournament so far. So the referee checking his watch. We're well into injury time. But Sergeev's on side here. The chance for the equaliser. John Brown's with him all the way. Great defending by John Brown. Well, the game started in dramatic fashion with Rangers under pressure. John Brown could so easily have slipped there, but he used all of his experience to rob Sergeev. Still play going on. We played a minute of injury time, and there goes the final whistle. And a terrific victory for Rangers in the European Champions League. Handshakes all around. And Rangers go on to three points from two games. The fans are delighted. And John Brown, what a terrific tackle there in the final moment. The full-time score here in Bochum. CSKA Moscow nil, Rangers one.
full time then in Bochum, CSKA Moscow no Rangers one. Terry, it's fair to say Ali McCoy had a great chance just after the restart and that would have killed the Russians completely. Yes, he uh, turned well on the edge of the box and uh, got in a good shot. Uh, here the ball comes across, he turns on his left foot and a good save by the keeper and he follows up with a good diving save at the feet of uh, Mikhailichenko. So it was a half chance there but he actually got the shot on target in the restart. Had that goal gone in obviously, Rangers would have uh, gone from strength to strength. We could have viewed the second half a bit more comfortably, Davey, had that gone in. Yeah, I think so. I think Rangers were looking to get the second goal at that time. But uh, the longer the second half was going on, you never really thought that uh, the Russians were going to come back into it. Rangers looked comfortable as the game went on. Let's look at a bit of action, Davey. Alexei Mikhailichenko, a beautiful piece of skill from him. David Robertson's cross. Now, watch for Mikhailichenko laying that off to Duran. Yeah, Davey? His first touch there was magnificent. A uh, great ball in, and he just cushioned the ball right on Ian Duran's path. Actually, Ian Durant could have maybe taken it in, but he had a shot at goal and he didn't connect with it right. Uh, but a, a lovely touch by Mikhailichenko right in his path. A lot of calls from Rangers fans tonight, Terry, saying that we should be praising Mikhailichenko highly. I mean, he played very well. He did play very well. He played very well in front of David Robertson, but he also played well coming back, uh, uh, picking up the Russian right back who was uh, um, overlapping as well. So he did well at the back and also going forward. I mean, he's, he's uh, in my... Uh, notes down here. He's he's been making one or two useful contributions mm -hmm. at the other ends. But I think to to pick out any Rangers player, you'd say, well, the whole team did very very the well. Whole team. Ian Ferguson played well though, didn't he? Uh, again, involved getting to the byline, cutting back for McCoy, and again, this would would have tied it up for Rangers had it gone in. Yeah, we we actually counted four chances in the second half, early in the second half, when Rangers could have scored four goals. A lovely ball by Mark Hately. He just gets there, good good hard cross. Defender turns it against the goalkeeper. And Alan McCoy's tries to, to volley the goalkeeper's head in the back of the net, mm. as usual. <laughs> a good ball across the face of the goal. Defender does well, actually. Goalkeeper does well. And Ali's, yeah. Ali just misses the ball there. Defender and the head nearly the knocked it in himself. He did. He, he certainly did. Goal, yeah. CSKA pushed uh, towards the end, Davies, as we thought they would. Um, uh, John Brown, I think we agreed he, he was a man of the match. Yeah, I think so. I think John Brown was magnificent tonight. I, like Terry, I don't think you can fault any Rangers player. I think they've all done their job. But uh, John Brown was, was a standout in, in my eyes. Anyway, he had a tremendous match tonight. There. Yeah. Now, it, it was there that Kolotovkin fouled Brown, didn't like the referee's decision, and watched for yeah. this spit there. Yeah. He could have landed in trouble if the ref. Yeah, certainly. Down. He was very lucky the referee was walking the other way there and didn't see him, or I think he was getting a red one. OK. I tell you what, let's go back to Bochum. Jim Delahunt is trackside with a very happy Walter Smith. Points away from home, you must be delighted. Absolutely delighted to finish uh, you know, the two matches before Christmas time. Um, sitting on three points, uh, we set out to do that, and uh, we've achieved it. And that was a They're terrific performance, this. a good They're working performance. Around, so it might happen well. in the middle of Scoring our chat. so early, you had a long time to sit and wait. We, we'll ignore that until I'm told, don't worry. Could they make them sponsorship sounds a bit smaller? Okay, we'll, we've lost the sound there in Bokum. We'll carry on here. Uh, we were talking about John Brown, Terry. Uh, let, let's have a look at what happened in the very last minute. Sergeyev cleaned through, Brown to the rescue again. Yes, I don't know what happened there, a bit of a, a lapse of concentration, but John Brown stands up well. The Russian tries to take it inside and John Brown actually wins a tackle. I mean, John Brown thought a magnificent game. That's a, that's a do or die tackle right in the last few seconds. I mean, you talked about the, uh, the uh, Rangers uh, man of the match was John Brown, I thought the Russian man of the match was the band. <laughs> the band, who we didn't hear of in the second half, quite disappointingly. No, it was, it was disappointing at half time. I think they really uh, shot their bolt at half time, so perhaps they'd uh, uh, ruined their repertoire. I didn't know what else to play in the second half. <laughs> they, they had to win in Bochum tonight, Rangers, Davey, and they did. It sets it up beautifully for them in March. It does. Um, first two games now to sit with three points. It'll be very interesting to see the other results tonight, but Walter Smith won't be worrying about that. He knows he's got three out of four, and uh, they've got March to look forward to in a uh, game against Bruges. Really be looking forward to it now. I mean, they were well and truly in it, Terry, aren't they? Oh, very much so. I mean, uh, uh, three points out of four is very good. I mean, if you look at the first um, hour, 75 minutes of the game against Marseille, you know, it's uh, a daunting task that faces them. But now you think, well, they've picked up two points away from home. They've got three points out of four from one game home, one game away. So they'd be very, very pleased. So at the end of the Marseille game, people were saying, well, you know, they've uh, really you know, got out of jail with that result, with, mm. the, with the two goals in the last 10 minutes or 15 minutes. But now you say, well, they're, they're not only out of jail now, they're, they're speeding away from jail and uh, obviously looking now to uh, collect £200 or go past, uh, past go. And, and briefly, they have the character to get to the final, yeah. Yeah, very much so. I mean, they've got a huge travelling support as well. I mean, there's fantastic support there from the servicemen in Germany and from the, from the, from the boys uh, back in Scotland. So they've got the support. 
they've got the belief now, I think, which they probably didn't have in the game against Marseille, but they have okay. the belief now. Thanks, Terry. Well, that's it for the moment then, but we're back after the news here in Scottish with the rest of tonight's Champion League action featuring the big game in Group B, PSV Eindhoven against AC Milan.